Victoria, let's talk about Michael. Where were you when you heard that he died? I was at home when, when I heard that he had passed. Here in Los Angeles? Here, the home in L.A., yes. And how did you hear? My father had kept calling and telling me to get over to his house because I, I live about two or three minutes away from him. And to go over to his house, he heard something was, was wrong with him, that he was sick or something of that nature. And I said, okay. And then he called back and says, I need for you to go now. And he, then he goes, no, go to the hospital instead. So he had his assistant. They were kept calling me. And it was my mother who initially said to me, my cousin, when I decided to go to the hospital, I was talking on the phone. I said, please, you got to tell me which way. I said, how's he doing? How's he doing? Because I didn't know he had passed. And I kept saying, how's he doing? Please tell me. He would never tell me. I said, why can't you tell me? And I heard my mother in the background said, who is that? And he said, it's LaToya. And she said, give me the phone. And she grabbed the phone and she screamed as loud as she could, Pierce, he's dead. As loud as she could. And when she, when she said that, I was driving at the moment and I almost wrecked the car and ran into people. I just, everything just went limp. Everything just I couldn't excel. I couldn't do anything. I got so weak, and I started begging people in the street to drive me to the hospital. I just, I said, please, can you take me to the hospital? I, I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't do anything, and it was so sad. And and I got so nervous, and I rushed into the hospital, and they took me upstairs to where my my mother was. It was my mother there, and I walked in the room, and there she was sitting. And all the kids, Michael's kids, were sitting on her lap just crying, just crying. And it was the worst thing I had ever seen or experienced in my life. I, I, did, I didn't know what to do. It's one of the most helpless feelings in the world that you have no power, no control over, and you don't know what to say. And I didn't know what to say. And his kids kept crying and crying and crying. And I said, Mother, is it true? Is it true? And she says, yes, it's true. Because going up there, one of the nurses says, you can relax. Your brother's still, he's still with us. And I got happy. And then I saw them all crying. And yeah. And it was, I didn't know what to do. I, and did, did you see Michael after he yes, passed? Yes, yes. I, um, I went in right away. The kids demanded to see him. We were in the hospital. And they kept saying, please, Auntie Latoya, we want to see him one last time. And they asked the nurse, please, we want to see him one last time. Please, can we go see our daddy? And I looked at the nurse. I didn't know if this was appropriate or not. And she says, yes, I want them to see him. And I said, are you sure? And she says, yes. She goes, because this will be closure for them. And they were crying the whole time. We all went in to see him. And Michael's three kids and myself and, and the nurse came with us. And we all held hands and we all prayed to him and we all just said all of our special thanks to him and what he's done for the world and, and for his family and the whole bit and how much we loved him and brushing his hair and wiping his face and, and just I just kept kissing him and telling him how much I love him and we all went around separately saying little things to him and the minute it was done the nurse felt that it was enough for everybody to be there which was quite a while the kids walked out and they never cried again I never saw them shed a tear after that. Really? It was and like it, they, they'd shed all the tears there? Yeah, it, it was closure. It was closure for them, like how, said. How do you think he died? You've been quoted as saying you, you believe it may have been murder. Do you still think that? Absolutely. Why, Absolutely. Why are you I so sure? I would never, ever think differently. Because, first of all, Michael told me that they were going to murder him. He was afraid. He was, was afraid for was his going life. To murder him? The people that were involved in his life, the people that were controlling him. This book, Starting Over, is about my life. And it's about Michael's life. It's the parallel between the two of our lives. We share that same life where people come into your life, wiggle their way in, control you, manipulate, control your funds, your finances, everything that you have, and you must do what they tell you to do. And that's what Michael was going through. And he knew that everything that was happening to him was not kosher, it wasn't right, and it disturbed him greatly. They controlled Michael. They controlled everything that he did, the people that were around him. This whole show, the whole bit going from 10 to, to 50 shows that he didn't agree with, he wasn't capable of doing. They knew he wasn't healthy enough to do those shows, but yet they said he was fine. Yet they took out insurance on him. Yet when it was time to go to London, Lloyd's of London, for another insurance, and the day when he gets there, he's supposed to go there and go directly to the hospital. But Michael never makes it there because they knew he wouldn't be healthy enough. Yet they put their own doctor in. Who said Michael? He flew. He, he passed with flying colors. He's, he's in perfect health. Michael was not in perfect health. 
He was very, very fragile, very thin. And the coroners, I will tell you, this was not an OD. The coroners told me immediately that the only drug that was in Michael's body was the drug that was administered to him that night. And that was it. He was totally clean. Do you think we'll ever find out the truth? I'm going to make sure we do.